This video is presented by the EA Creator Network. Thank you very much EA for inviting me the chance to play FIFA 22. What's going on boys? No guides here. Welcome back to another video. First of all, I want to say again a massive thank you to the EA Creator Network for giving me the chance to play this game early and giving you and presenting you the video most importantly. Now today's video we're going to go over tactics. Now I know you want to know the most meta tactics in the game but my job for now is to explain to you how tactics works, what's changed and what's new in FIFA 22. So the first one is the defensive tactics. Now, it's the exact same from last year. Nothing has changed. So you have drop back, which is kind of the, the drop back systematic approach as we knew from last year. It'll be interesting to see how this really transpires as the game goes on because don't forget the new defending AI and all those changes to defense and the way human interactions AI works. It'll be interesting to see how they defend. And um, we do have, of course, balance the same as last year, a more natural approach that the players apply a bit of pressure, um, but there is no direct force of applying pressure itself. They kind of maintain their positions. Then we have pressure on every touch and press out the possession loss. Pressure on every touch, again, as usual, is if there's a loose ball situation, your team will kind of apply pressure, I suppose you can say systematically, but it's more sporadically. It's not all the time. It's kind of a safe, more reserved type pressing. Um, think of this like press after possession loss, except for you only press when there's a good chance for you to win the ball or when your opponent's in a bad situation. We then are then our press after possession loss. The exact same thing from last year. Don't forget, it's the Pep Guardiola-esque approach in Barcelona. Barcelona? Barcelona when you press for approximately seven seconds after you lose the ball. So every single time you lose the ball, you press. So obviously stamina could be drained and you could be called out of position. And we then, of course, have constant pressure, which can still be used with a team press D-pad tactic inside the game. But of course, if you want to press very, very quickly and apply pressure, let's say you're losing 1 or 2 nil. We do have constant pressure. Now, where this will change is that the width now goes all the way, the parameters go all the way from, the sliders go from 1 all the way to 100. So, in effect, you could have a bit more of a minute change to your system, and you can perfect it to how you want. So, FIFA 18 was like similar to this. It was 1 to 100. Last year, it was 1 to 10. Now, the good thing is that when, let's say, for example, constant pressure, what I found last year was 100 width was just too effective. Well, I'm going to say 100, but let's just say the maximum width um, of 99 or 100 was just too wide and the problem was 90 was just a bit too low and 95 will give the sweet spot in between them so let's say for example last year 70 was known to be the automatic offside trap which is basically defensive line trying to play the last striker offside um, but maybe people found that to be too abrasive so now you can make it 65 instead of 70 so you kind of have the in between integer that lets you perfect it. and that's for all the parameters not just for width for the depth um, for their attacking width and the players in the box and those have also changed as well um, so i'm going to go through those as well in a second so width and depth can be changed um, i'll go through this more as the video goes on and in my other videos on my video on my channel um, but don't forget parameters are between 1 and 100. We then have the new one, the offensive play. So offensive, we now have a build-up option. Now, the best way to describe this is build-up is for the first, I would say, two-thirds. So I would say for the first two-thirds of the pitch, this is when this tactic is really taken in effect. So what it basically is, is that when you have the ball in possession and you're going from your defense to attack, these tactics are most important. So balance is the one that I'd recommend for now. Um, you then have slow build-up play. So if you like to play a very slow, progressive approach in FIFA 18, you just play a very organized, slow build-up play, and then kind of free form in the final third. The slow build-up play is really good for the possession players, or let's say your opponent is really, really being aggressive towards you, and you want to kind of alleviate the pressure. Slow build-up play is a really good option. We then have fast build-up play. Similar to how it was last year, you go straight away from A to Z. So as soon as you get the ball, you're going from there to there as quick and as fast as possible, similar to last year. So if you're getting pressed very, very quickly, and let's say your players are committing, your opponent's playing, let's say, a 4-4-2, four, a four, four, got his wing-backs joining the attack, you can then counter them very quickly. So good tactic for the counter-attack formations. We then have a long ball, which is when players try to make runs in behind. So when you do get the ball going forward, don't forget long balls like getting behind. So players are going to be making runs in behind, in particular the strikers, the left mids, the right mids. Very, very powerful in the 4-2-3-1. And then we have balanced. So you have no possession on, I suppose you can say, the build-up play. Slow build-up play is kind of the, the position S tactic. But you can still use the RB or the R1 button to bring players close and L1 to push them forward. Then we have chance creation. Now, remember when you're outside, think about people 21. Let's say you're outside the box. You always thought, how can I command the forward part of my attack, the, the final third, my strikers? Well, 
that's what they've essentially done on chance creation. So when you're in the final third, so I would say it's kind of the final third, but I would say extends basically to the to the halfway line as well. So when you're in your opponent's outside your opponent's box on your opponent's half, you have options of forward runs, direct passing, balanced or possession. So balance is kind of a mix of everything. I'd recommend everyone to start on balance first. That's kind of the best and the best way go to. Then you have possession. So possession is if let's say your opponent is playing very very deep and you like to play the Wenger esque system of trying to walk the walk the ball into the back of the net. Then possession is a really, really good system of bringing players come close. If you've got the ball with your strike or your cam, then a player will kind of come close, provide support. Especially with the new AI in, inside the game, players will kind of drop off. So think of like, think of like Messi, where like sometimes he drops from a strike position and he kind of comes deep. It has that system as long as the players on balance. So that's a really, really good system if you like a slow, lethargic, but I suppose you can say a controlled, minute process going forward into the into the opponent's box. Then you have forward runs. Now, forward runs and direct pass, remember for the pitch notes, um, they both are quite aggro, I would say, quite aggressive. Now, in my opinion, forward runs is more of the system where you commit to more players going forward, more players are going to go forward. This is, I would say, the one where players are trying to get it behind, but they're committing more often than not, leaving yourself exposed. This would be, let's say, for example, you're losing 70 minutes or you want to be very, very attacking then this is very much the formation to go. You know, players are going to be making runs going forward. If they've got good work rates, they're going to be making even more attacking runs with attack positioning, of course. Um, and direct passing is more of the same thing where players will still try to get in behind, but it won't be as gung-ho as forward runs. What I'll do is I'll make a video explaining this in detail. Of course, this video has to be short, um, but I'll make a full video explaining how forward runs and direct passing works. And don't forget, this will change depending on how the game goes on. So I'll test those fluidly and I'll let you know what's the best things over the next couple of days. Um, then we have the attacking width. Again, the exact same thing. Um, the attacking width is now influenced, of course, by the parameters of going from 1 to 100. Of course, you have build up play and chance creation. So, of course, the wider the width you have, do you suppose you can say you're wider, you're built. So if you've got slow build up play, and let's say you got, let's say, forward run, then your players are going to make a very, very slow build up play, but be very, very wide. And then the final third, depending on your formation, of course, they'll be very, very forward. Of course, that depends on your formation. If you're playing, for example, a wide formation, your team will be much wider. If you play, for example, in contrast, a 4 2 3 1 narrow, they won't be as wide as, for example, a 4 2 3 1 wide. So, of course, it depends on the players you have on the pitch as well and what position they are in. Um, so that is basically the tactics, the main things that have changed. We do have players inside the box. Um, people always thought that players, people always thought players inside the box was when you're outside the box. No, it's only when you're on a crossing type situation. And this is defined to how many players you want to be making runs inside the box. Of course, you can make every single player or near about all players run inside the box. Don't forget instructions still have the veto over tactics. So if you put, for example, a player on stay back while attacking, they are still going to stay back while attacking. Tactics basically influence how you play and the instructions basically veto. So if you tell someone to stay back, they're going to stay back regardless. And then corners and free kicks are between one to five parameter. Very, very similar from last year. And that is basically tactics in a nutshell. More videos will be coming up, of course, in the next couple of days. I'm explaining how tactics work. Of course, thank you very much again um, to the Game Changer Network and for EA for giving me the chance to present this video to you guys. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out, guys.